in fluid mechanics or more generally continuum mechanics. Incompressible flow refers to a flow in which the material density is constant within a fluid parcel, an infinitesimal volume that moves with the flow velocity. An equivalent statement that implies incompressibility is that the divergence of the flow velocity is zero. Incompressible flow does not imply that the fluid itself is incompressible. It is shown in the derivation below that even compressible fluids can, to good approximation, be modeled as an incompressible flow. Incompressible flow implies that the density remains constant within a parcel of fluid that moves with the flow velocity. Derivation. The fundamental requirement for incompressible flow is that the density is constant within an infinitesimal volume, dV, which moves at the flow velocity u. Mathematically, this constraint implies that the material derivative of the density must vanish to ensure incompressible flow. Before introducing this constraint, we must apply the conservation of mass to generate the necessary relations. The mass is calculated by a volume integral of the density. The conservation of mass requires that the time derivative of the mass inside the control volume be equal to the mass flux, J, across its boundaries. Mathematically, we can represent this constraint in terms of a surface integral. The negative sign in the above expression ensures that outward flow results in a decrease in the mass with respect to time, using the convention that the surface area vector points outward. Now, using the divergence theorem we can derive the relationship between the flux and the partial time derivative of the density. Therefore, the partial derivative of the density with respect to time need not vanish to ensure incompressible flow. When we speak of the partial derivative of the density with respect to time, we refer to this rate of change within a control volume of fixed position. By letting the partial time derivative of the density be non-zero, we are not restricting ourselves to incompressible fluids. Because the density can change as observed from a fixed position as fluid flows through the control volume, this approach maintains generality, and not requiring that the partial time derivative of the density vanish illustrates that compressible fluids can still undergo incompressible flow. What interests us is the change in density of a control volume that moves along with the flow velocity. The flux is related to the flow velocity through the following function, so that the conservation of mass implies that the previous relation is known as the continuity equation. Now, we need the following relation about the total derivative of the density. So if we choose a control volume that is moving at the same rate as the fluid equals V, then this expression simplifies to the material derivative. And so using the continuity equation derived above, we see that a change in the density over time would imply that the fluid had either compressed or expanded, which we have prohibited. We must then require that the material derivative of the density vanishes, and equivalently so must the divergence of the flow velocity. And so beginning with the conservation of mass and the constraint that the density within a moving volume of fluid remains constant. It has been shown that an equivalent condition required for incompressible flow is that the divergence of the flow velocity vanishes. Relation to compressibility. In some fields, a measure of the incompressibility of a flow is the change in density as a result of the pressure variations. This is best expressed in terms of the compressibility. If the compressibility is acceptably small, the flow is considered incompressible. Relation to solenoidal field. An incompressible flow is described by a solenoidal flow velocity field. But a solenoidal field, besides having a zero divergence, also has the additional connotation of having non-zero curl. Otherwise, if an incompressible flow also has a curl of zero, so that it is also a rotational, then the flow velocity field is actually Laplacian. Difference between incompressible flow and material. As defined earlier, an incompressible flow is the one in which this is equivalent to saying that i.e., the material derivative of the density is zero. Thus, if we follow a material element, its mass density remains constant. Note that the material derivative consists of two terms. 
The first term describes how the density of the material element changes with time. This term is also known as the unsteady term. The second term describes the changes in the density as the material element moves from one point to another. This is the advection term. For a flow to be incompressible the sum of these terms should be zero. On the other hand, a homogeneous, incompressible material is one that has constant density throughout. For such a material, this implies that, and independently, from the continuity equation it follows that thus homogeneous materials always undergo flow that is incompressible, but the converse is not true. It is common to find references where the author mentions incompressible flow and assumes that density is constant. Even though this is technically incorrect, it is an accepted practice. One of the advantages of using the incompressible material assumption over the incompressible flow assumption is in the momentum equation where the kinematic viscosity or varying density flow. The varying density set accepts solutions involving small perturbations in density, pressure and or temperature fields and can allow for pressure stratification in the domain. An elastic flow, principally used in the field of atmospheric sciences, the anelastic constraint extends incompressible flow validity to stratified density and or temperature as well as pressure. This allows the thermodynamic variables to relax to an atmospheric base state seen in the lower atmosphere when used in the field of meteorology. For example, this condition can also be used for various astrophysical systems. Low Mach number flow, pseudo-incompressibility. The low Mach number constraint can be derived from the compressible Euler equations using scale analysis of non-dimensional quantities. The restraint, like the previous in this section, allows for the removal of acoustic waves but also allows for large perturbations in density and or temperature. The assumption is that the flow remains within a Mach number limit for any solution using such a constraint to be valid. Again, in accordance with all incompressible flows the pressure deviation must be small in comparison to the pressure base state. These methods make differing assumptions about the flow, but all take into account the general form of the constraint for general flow-dependent functions and numerical approximations of incompressible flow. The stringent nature of the incompressible flow equations means that specific mathematical techniques have been devised to solve them. Some of these methods include the projection method, artificial compressibility technique, Compressibility preconditioning, 